at NBA.com. This is John Supports for the 21st. Well, you can see we're starting off uh, just a modest bit lower from the close on Friday. Pretty consistent. We're being held under that uh, previous algo level here at the 4,008 range. Uh, been unable to get over it. We've had, uh, well, declining readings uh, from MBI with magenta continuing to fade. Same with that, but we're not getting any activation from the shorts. This would have to turn around and be back up over at least, you know, five plus range. Um, and while we've seen even on the DLC some, you know, the short activity in that uh, you've had short term buyers putting in enough effort to keep things up. So it's really suspending this, uh, you know, big move that took place on the CPI numbers and kind of holding it as people are trying to determine. But, you know, broader signals that, you know, you start to see, we look at, you know, freight and some of these other things that are taking place and, you know, dramatic drop in the amount of cargo in that, you know, leading up to what is the holiday season. And that could be interesting because this is really the debate we've been having as to whether or not uh, there's been a significant supply increase or if it's just a demand drop. And, uh, you know, the end of this week is going to tell a lot on that. And I think it's going to be one of those uh, mixed bags that we've been talking about. And, you know, the Fed could be getting close to their idea of a soft landing where some areas are hit a little bit more than others. But overall, um, you know, just maintaining enough uh, sufficiency to keep going. You can see the NQ, identical readings, uh, actually a little bit stronger in DOC with the uh, Steel actually almost prepared to cross above steel. Um, we've had that declining shakeout. Watching whether it will go negative because uh, move negative at this particular stage would presage some you know deeper contraction. But got to see some turnaround from uh, MBI weight to, to suggest that that's going to have any significance. Though we know from a daily standpoint, it can happen very quickly, and obviously we see the tails of it. Uh, on the daily versus when we're in the shorter term frame, uh, like the 50K or even 5K that uh, I tend to follow uh, regularly. Um, and this is powerful, uh, oil dropping now. So is this a demand or a supply increase? More likely it's uh, a demand issue because uh, we know that uh, other producers have been cutting supply in that. And, um, but that's definitely takes a lot of pressure off and certainly eases things. And like I said, you know, you start getting into the, low 70s upper 60s well that says could be enough to just start generating the engine enough to keep things from uh, tipping over uh, from a euro standpoint of course we knew that the move with the positive extremes was a little too much still has uh, half a penny or more to go uh, it was quite a dramatic move on the cpi but, uh, the same improvements are going to take place in the Eurozone as far as the easing with oil. Uh, and it, it just amazes me that they're unable to get the correlation between the two. But that's okay. <laughs> we're, we're able to see it, so we can trade off of uh, uh, the readings that we get and from a uh, TLT. So Treasuries, again, uh, this was an exuberance that really was just a flight to safety and i think that that uh, is indicative yield is definitely still has to rise because the fed isn't going to stop just yet which they should but they're not going to listen to me <laughs> just to pause enough to get a clear enough idea as to what you know the rate increases have done and whether or not they're sustainable unless they're really looking for that paradigm of shifting back to a normalcy of you know, mid fours plus for interest rates and um, that would give them more tools for the future uh, than being closer to zero. So it's uh, an alternative, you know, longer term viewpoint that uh, could be weighing on them uh, because the idea of uh, returning back to a normalized rate, which would also make uh, the excessive spending that uh, Congress and that does uh, prohibitive because of what it would look like. Uh, from an interest rate uh, expense uh, skyrocketing with the massive uh, deficits. Not to mention just je the debt in general is so large that that's eating up larger and larger uh, portions, though it's a bit ironic since the Fed owns quite a bit of it and they just repatriate the returns from that. So um, it's kind of uh, a fun little game they play. <laughs>
gold uh, retracing a bit. We had some positive extremes from that one, actually. I should mark, we go all the way back to the original breakout. The secondary uh, setup right there. So I would imagine the, the healthy thing for be to fill it back and do the you know, classic ABC step up. But again, if there's going to be this um, softness in deflationary pressure, uh, that will not be a strong advocate for gold in that case. Uh, it really becomes a question of world crisis at that point. And Bitcoin having trouble holding on to that. And again, I think there's still more uh, dealing with this FTX thing. Now we have uh, issues with Tether and whether or not they actually have the assets since they were closely linked to FTX. So starting to, uh, in a sense, police the uh, crypto space where people are starting to ask the hard questions that they pretty much ignored uh, before. And um, it's interesting because uh, it certainly creates a lot of opportunity within the space if they're able to flesh out uh, some of this uh, lack of controls in that and actually uh, make it uh, stable and everything. So that would be an interesting development. Um, I'd have to run back on our daily here from way back. I think that we have, uh, uh, you can see it. there's a 11,500 positive extreme uh, level. And I think there's also another one at 13. I'll have to run back and look at those. Um, that was from a while ago, and that was quite an exuberant run. Uh, ETH suffering more, uh, I think that that's a recognition of this whole question of uh, Tether, and uh, because so many of the transactions for Bitcoin and that are done through Tether and that, as well as now uh, Ethereum and that, this is uh, pretty much a bleed of the whole crypto idea being uh, a safe haven for uh, you know fleeing fiat currencies when in fact now it's looking like uh, just manipulated markets or pretty much the same as regular currencies but uh, just different players that certainly uh, uh, reserve banks have a lot more power than uh, uh, the populace in general uh, from a 50k standpoint you can see we've been in this uh, casual sliding and that's reducing the range of the uh, morganacci lines and as that compresses usually there's a desire for an explosion this is the perfect week for it because we're going to get into some really light volumes with thanksgiving coming up and uh, we'll literally make it easy for uh, what I call uh, the momentum trades, which is where they can see an imbalance. And it takes just as much smaller parties can start to move things. And you get sometimes pretty good runs, particularly if you're hitting key areas. We're caught between these pivotal um, algorithm uh, setup points, the 57 range, 70, uh, and on the low side down at uh, 39, 38 range. Uh, but we literally just filled back the full move of the breakout, which was on positive extreme, literally just right above that 57. So all we did was fill the late breakout. Uh, you can just follow the lines across. We've been held pretty much consistently within them throughout most of this period. And uh, it's been fairly clean to follow them. I mean, the day was uh, modest from volume standpoint, but uh, started off with this clear breakout on positive extremes, starting at the very bar right there, 57, shot up, retraced it all the way, came back, broke a little bit below it, and then did exactly that, just broke back up to the peak, and we're right back in the same spot. Just beautiful, clean, great ranges. All good stuff, so just keep trading the heck out of it. No complaints at all. As always, though, I will be on the uh, Skype chat. Trade well. We'll talk to you later.